Up next on the workbench, I'm building a DIY battery spot holder. This is a tool you need to safely and easily assemble your own custom battery packs. Let's get started. Hey everyone, Chris here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into the build for this. A powerful battery spot holder. Now before we go any further, a quick but important safety notice. This device works by generating an extremely high instant current. Please be careful when building and using it. So how does it work? The principle is simple. We create a controlled, momentary short circuit across a powerful battery. This sudden surge of current is focused through the tips of our props, generating enough heat to spot weld nickel stripes onto battery cells. The key word here is control it. An uncontrolled short circuit is dangerous and can destroy your battery. That's where this circuit I designed comes in. Its entire job is to make this process safe, reliable, and repeatable. I started by laying out the schematic in Altium Develop. The brain of the operation is the classic NE555 timer which is configured to generate a single precise pulse. This pulse drives the second key player, a bank of powerful MOSFETs. These MOSFETs act as a high-speed switch, handling the massive current flow from the battery to the welding props. To trigger a weld, you press this momentary push button. This ensures only one clean pulse is sent, protecting the PCB traces from the heat of continuous current and giving us a perfect weld every time. Once the schematic was perfect, I transformed it into this PCB layout. We are using through-hole components for a robust and easy-to-solder build. I've clearly indicated the prop connections and arranged the MOSFETs in parallel to share the high current load. And here is a 3D render of the final board design. You can access these design files on your own design using the online accessibility features of Altium Develop. Just click the link in the video's description to request access to the project and I will approve it. Once approved, you will be able to examine the circuit schematic, PCB layout, 3D views and even the bill of materials. You can also leave comments or questions if you need any clarifications and I will provide detailed replies. This tool is incredibly valuable, especially for team collaboration as it provides instant access to project files anytime, anywhere. Now back to the circuit design, a critical detail for a board like this is the trace width. The paths that carry the main welding current need to be very wide to handle the immense surge without overheating. I've designed those power traces to be as large as the board layout would allow. With the design finalized, the next step was to get the boards manufactured. I sent the Gerber files off to JLC PCB. I went with a black solder mask for the sleek look. But one of the great things about JLC PCB is that all standard colors cost the same so you can pick whatever you like. I placed the order, and just six days later, the iconic blue JLC PCB box arrived. As you can see, the PCBs inside turned out perfectly, and the quality is fantastic. Now for the assembly, since we're using through-hole components, it's a straightforward job with a soldering iron and some solder. I carefully installed all the components, resistors, capacitors, and finally, soldered the parallel MOSFETs. For the welding props, I used thick 4mm copper rods, I soldered heavy gauge cables to them, and used heat shrink tubing to insulate the joints safely and securely. For the pulse button, I soldered wires to its contacts and added header pins on the other end to plug easily onto the board. To make everything ergonomic, I attached the push button directly to the negative probe handle and sealed it with more heat shrink. The final assembly was just screwing the positive and negative probes into their terminals on the board and connecting the push button. Now for the moment of truth, we connect the main power input to our 12-volt battery. 
when I press the push button, this LED flashes confirming the NE555 is sending a pulse to the MOSFET gates. Notice that if I short circuit the probes together, nothing happens. The circuit is safe and ideal. But the instant I press the push button while the probes are touching this nickel stripe, you get the satisfying spark of controlled energy discharge. I use this to fuse nickel stripes onto battery cells, and as you can see, the results are very promising. It gets the job done effectively. A quick tip with a 12V 7 amps battery, you will want to use thinner nickel stripes, as the current source has its limits. If you upgrade to a more powerful battery, remember that your PCB traces must be designed to handle that increased current. And there you have it, this DIY spot welder works perfectly. By following these steps, you can build your own and start assembling custom battery packs right at your workbench. That's all for this build, I hope you found it helpful. If you did, let me know what you think in the comments below. One last thing, make sure you are doing electronics every day. It was Chris, see you next time.